Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to teach you about margins and padding in CSS. Now, margins and padding are basically two attributes that you can define about a specific HTML element that will control the element's spacing. And so we can use padding to control the spacing inside of the element and we can use margins to control the spacing outside of the element. And the easiest way to wrap your head around margins and padding is to just see an example. Over here on my web browser, I have a div set up, which is just a container, and it's colored with a background color of blue. And then inside we have this paragraph, and you can see that down here. So we just have a div, and then we have some text inside of here. I can actually give this div some margins or padding and it will control the spacing. So the first thing I wanna do is give this some padding. So I'm gonna type padding just like that. And I can give this a pixel value or really you can use any sort of unit of measurement um, in CSS. I'm gonna use pixels so I could say 10 pixels. And now what's gonna happen is over here there should be some extra space inside of this element. So I'm just gonna refresh the page and you can see now we have these little mar these little paddings right here. So the text, instead of being right up against the edge of the div, is now a little bit inside of the div, right? So it's been like centered inside of there, and we have some nice space here. And so the margin is, or the padding is all the space that's highlighted in green. So you can see here's all the text right here, and then the padding is the stuff that's in green. So if I can make this, you know maybe instead of 10 we could do like 50 and now this there should be like a huge amount of padding here so all the padding is the stuff that's in green so padding will allow you to control like how far in the next element is so like this text has like a padding of 50 pixels so it's like embedded inside of that div 50 pixels on each side you can also control individual padding sides so i can control the padding just on the top or on the different sides and I could say, instead of just saying padding, I could say padding hyphen top. And now this padding will only apply to the top of the element. So you can see all the padding disappeared on the bottom and the sides and the padding is only here at the top. And you know, you could define like padding top, you could also define padding bottom and this would give us only padding on the top and the bottom. Just like that. So you can use padding top, padding bottom, padding right or padding left, and that'll control each one of those. Or you can control individual values in the same tag. So that'll save you some space and some time. So I can just say padding, and then I can specify the value for each side. And the sides are gonna go in a clockwise manner. So you'd start with top, and then you'd go to right, and then you'd go to bottom, and then you'd go to left. So I could say like, maybe the top's gonna be 50, the right will be 10, uh, the bottom will be 50 and let's say the left is going to be 10 as well. So we should have like a nice even padding. So the tops and the bottoms are going to be 50 and the sides are going to be 10s. And you can see that's exactly what happens. So this will save you from having to type out like all four of those padding top, padding bottom, padding left and padding right. And you'll just be able to specify all of them like this. And again, that's in a clockwise order. So it's going to start top, right, bottom, left. So padding is one thing that we can use. We can also use something else called margin. And margins are, unlike padding, which is space inside of the element. So when we put padding on this div, we had a bunch of space like inside of this blue area here. Margin is gonna be the same type of space, but it's gonna be outside the element. And so instead of the space being like in here, it's gonna be out here. And so that'll sort of like push other elements in our HTML away. and I can define the margin by just saying margin. And again, we can give this a value. So I'm gonna give this a value of 25 pixels. And now what you'll see is this container is actually gonna move. So we have all of this and it actually moved in. So before, if I give this zero pixels of margin, it's all the way out here on the sides. But when I give it 25 pixels, it sort of comes in, right? And we're, there's actually a bunch of space out here. So you can see all those margins are what's highlighted here in like this orange color. And so that's all space that's outside of this container. That's the margin. And you can do the same thing with margins that you can do with padding. So I can define like margin top or margin bottom. So I could say margin hyphen top. And now we'll only have padding on the top here. 
Or I could do the same thing I did before. So I could define it in a clockwise manner and define all of them. So we could say like top would be 25. Let's say the sides are gonna be 50, the bottom's 25. And then the sides, the other side is 50. And now we'll be able to control the margin just like we did with the padding. So margins and padding can be really useful. And one more thing I want to mention about margins is you can actually give these negative margins. Now you wanna be careful when you use negative margins. Generally, you're not gonna to wanna to use them, um, but sometimes there are circumstances where you will. So I could specify a margin here, um, a negative margin, and I could actually use this to move this element. So let's define a negative margin top. So let's make it negative 25 pixels. And now what'll happen is this element will actually move up on the screen. So it's moving up closer and closer to this header. And if I was to make this like negative 50, you'll see that these elements end up overlapping. And so instead of the margin like pushing the element down, the, the negative margin is moving the element up. So like I said, you know, be careful when you use negative margins. You're probably only gonna wanna use them in a couple different scenarios, but for the most part, margins and padding are gonna be something that you wanna use for all of your elements, and you're really gonna wanna include them in your CSS files. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.